Hi everyone, it's Paige. Welcome back to my channel. Before you click out of this video because of the supremely trashy quality of the video, I am currently on Zoom because today we're gonna do another one of my online book shopping videos. I did one of these back in May around my birthday and it, I called it like my birthday book shopping video. And today I thought it'd be a good chance to do one again because I have uh, two different $50 Barnes & Noble gift cards. So one of them is actually from a subscriber, uh, Michael. Michael sent me an e-gift card a couple months ago or a month ago, and uh, I haven't gotten the chance to use it yet. And if you know me, I can't let a gift card sit too long because I've all, I always have books in my cart that I want desperately. And uh, so today we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna use up that gift card. Thank you so much, Michael. You did not have to do that, but I am so excited to, to add a few more of my most anticipated books to my actual collection. The second gift card is actually from Troy, my boyfriend. He had the opportunity to pick a place to get a gift card from and he chose Barnes & Noble for me. So that was like his gift to me. So thank you to Troy as well. He's always fueling my book addiction. And today we're just gonna, just gonna add some more fuel to the fire. So anyway, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go on barnesandnoble.com and spend a hundred dollars. <laughs> Okay, so I have two tabs open. The first tab is my Barnes & Noble wish list, which I just recently started adding to. I usually don't use this function in Barnes & Noble if I'm gonna add something to like a wish list. It's usually in like my want to read list on Goodreads. If you don't follow me on Goodreads, um, you should because I don't know, why not? <laughs> so anyway, what I'm going to do is scope through this wish list that I have, see if I should or could or would want to buy which ones. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it, it gets so hard when I get down to the nitty gritty to like make legitimate decisions about what books I'm going to buy. Like, because that means I'm not buying some of the other books. And that's just like so sad to me. Let's look through this first. So my first book here is another I have wanted this book for a while, but but at the same time, the paperback is $27. That is a lot. You save 10%. Wow. So I would say let's put this in like low priority. Like if I have leftover funds, which is unlikely, I will maybe do that one. All right. So this book, um, I can't remember who told me about this book, but I've heard good things about it. And... It's pretty, it's a pretty good price for the paperback. So let's go ahead and add this to the cart. I feel like this is a safe bet. Okay, so we've added that to the cart. If you don't know what this book is about, it is definitely a, I think it's adult fantasy. Oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't get this. I think this is a sequel series. Oh, not a good review off the bat. Okay, actually, never mind. Um, apparently, I'm an idiot. So we're taking this off of the cart because this is a sequel series to another book series. Um, so I should probably look into that one first. Sorry. Okay, Wolf Song. I think I really do want this one. Um, I hear so many people talk about it, and now this author has wrote, um, yeah, the house. Um, the House in the Cerulean Sea. I've heard really good things about this one, um, but before she had even come out, I think it's a she, before they had even come out with um, that new book that's really popular, I had always been hearing about this one. Uh, but of course, this one is not available, so at least not in the way I want it. I'm not really looking for ebooks right now. Well, that kind of sucks. Um, maybe we should add the Cerulean Sea to the cart I mean I've heard so many good things about it I wish you were actually here to like give me advice on whether or not I should I'm gonna add it to the cart how about that I'm gonna add it should I get the hardback though uh I have such a hard time getting hardbacks when there is a paperback option mm, I'm just gonna get the paperback option that's one down okay this next one spin the dawn I have been talking about getting this book forever. A lot of you have recommended it to me. And I just, in my last video, talked about her new release that's coming out. I feel like I should get this one. And I feel like I could I could get it in hardback um, because it's not that big of a price difference. Uh, okay, we'll add it to the cart. 
Um, this is about a girl named Maya, who is the daughter of a really talented tailor, and she has aspirations to one day be the greatest tailor, uh, but she is a girl, so she isn't allowed to do that, but when um, a royal court messenger calls upon her father to come to court, uh, she decides that she is going to go in her father's place, so she dresses up as a boy and becomes a tailor in the um, royal court or the palace. I really like that a lot. Um, I was a big fan of the Flame in the Mist by Renee Audier, so I feel like I have to get this one as well. Next one is Red Sister. So this is on my, obviously on my wish list, but it's also, I also own it on Audi Audible, and I've heard that it's actually better or just as good as an audiobook, so I actually think I'm going to pass on that one right now. But this next one, The Silent Companions, I believe this is a horror, a historical fiction horror, I think. Um, I think I do. I think I'm going to get this one um, because it just intrigues me a lot. I, and I feel like I don't get to read a lot of like the kind of horror that I really want to read. Like I do like modern thrillers, but I always am looking for that like historical fiction sort of terror. Um, so kind of like, I guess you could say kind of like Mexican Gothic, like that time period and that setting of like, the gothic mansion that's haunted um i want to read more of that i just don't so let's just get started with buying this one right this is about a girl named elsie who marries a nobleman uh and she moves into his uh estate or whatever and weeks after their wedding she uh her husband dies but in this house that she lives in there is a locked door uh, beyond which is a painted wooden figure, a silent companion that bears a striking resemblance to Elsie herself. Yeah, I just, I love it. It's like a Victorian ghost story and I am super here for it and I think I'll really like it. A lot of people like Laura Purcell a lot. Um, this will be the first work of hers that I will have read, but if I like this one, I am pretty confident that I would like her other stuff too, because she tends to go for that like Gothic or Victorian horror. All right, so we have three. Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. This is a super popular book on TikTok. I feel like TikTok has let me down a little bit as far as books that are hyped that aren't, that I just find that enjoyable. Like not all books, like, like for example, I did really like From Blood and Ash which is super big on TikTok, but I don't know. I mean, the paperback is only $10. Yeah, this is a young adult, I guess you would call it historical fiction. I don't know if this would be considered fantasy. It's definitely a story that is about Vikings uh, and it follows a teenage girl named Ellen, Aline. And I guess it's just about her struggle to survive with her Viking village during the winter in the mountains. Uh, and she's kind of dealing with this betrayal of her brother who is now fighting with an enemy village, I guess, you know, very, it sounds very action packed, which I am here for. I would like that. I think it's on at least every other list that I see on TikTok. I'm going to assume that since it pops up so much, it must be really good. All right. This next one I know I have to get because some people that I do really, really trust have said that this is amazing. So this is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I just recently kind of started looking into this, even though the cover is sort of familiar to me, uh, because of just the sheer amount of people that suddenly were suggesting this to me, because I definitely, I definitely missed it when it was like a really big thing in 2020. But as soon as like the new year hit and I was talking to other people um, about the books that they enjoyed in 2020, this was a book that repeatedly came up. This is about a I mean, a satyr, I guess, a satyr, I think, named Piranesi, who lives in a house that is kind of like a labyrinth. It's filled with different wonders and collections, and he spends his life wandering this house and exploring its depths. And twice a week, Piranesi is visited by the only other person who lives in this house, a man called The Other, and Piranesi is asked to help him research uh, into a great and secret knowledge. But as Piranesi helps him research he starts to uncover some uh terrible truth so i think it's actually very short which intrigues me also uh when an author can do so much in such a short number of pages 
So this is definitely, I already knew that this was one I had to get today because I'm just so interested. I have this anyway, the wind blows on my wish list, but this is not released yet. And I don't like, I honestly don't enjoy pre-ordering books uh, through Barnes and Noble or really anywhere else because they never come on time. Like I'm, I feel like every time I've pre-ordered a book so anywhere, like it comes the day after the day after that. And if I am desperate enough to pre-order something, that means that I want it on release day. So I just don't pre-order anymore, which sucks because I missed out on some things, but okay. Vicious. Um, this is not a super high priority for me, especially considering I haven't even finished, um, the Shades of Magic trilogy yet. So we're going to pass by this and maybe I'll come back to it. But I do know that I want The Gollum and the Ginny by Helene Wecker. I've heard so much good about this book. Um, I don't remember if it was a release in 2020 or if it was before that, but I do know that I have seen this cover and the other variations of this cover around Barnes & Noble for a while. And every time I would, literally every time, not exaggerating, anytime I would go through the fantasy aisle, I would see this book and I would look at it and like, oh, that looks really cool, but I'd never buy it. And then finally, um, people just kept telling me how good it was. And I was like, all right, you know, it's time that I finally bit the bullet and I just got it. So uh, it was actually a sort of a relief that people said it was so good because it kind of like confirmed that sometimes you can judge books by their covers, I think. This person describes this as a complex tale of Jewish historical fiction. So think Arabian Nights. So this is obviously about a golem and a jinni. So Chava is the golem, and he is a golem made of clay. And his master or creator dies at sea, and he washes up. Uh, Chava washes up on um, shore in New York in in 1899. Ahmad is the jinni, and he's a fire jinni, and he is trapped in an old copper flask until he is released in New York City at the same time. And basically, the two of them become um, unlikely friends. And the description calls them soulmates. So since I just finished The City of Brass, that whole trilogy, actually, um, and I just enjoyed so much getting to see Jin represented in that fantasy novel, I'm excited to see how this is going to be, how this interpretation of Jin is going to be, especially since this is more like urban fantasy, like historical fiction fantasy. So I just want to see how that's dealt with and how... Um, especially Ahmad is represented. Uh, and I've never actually seen a Gollum before in any sort of fantasy novel. I've only seen Gollum represented in like fantasy games or things of that nature. Okay, we're at 107. So listen here, I'm gonna go through the rest of my wish list, and something's gotta go. So this is a sad moment. This is the moment where things start to either go or things start to replace other things. I don't know. <sighs> and the problem is that I want this book so bad, A Winter's Promise. This is um, the first book in a fantasy series that was originally written in French and was translated to English. And uh, just recently, probably in the past couple of months, I've started to actually hear about this series. I don't know, you know, what, why I wasn't up to date on it or whatever, but apparently it's like really really good like it's it's a lot of people's like oh but it's out of stock you know what never mind and this is ironic that it's out of stock because when I was at Barnes and Noble a few weeks ago and I made that video it was also out of stock in the store so I don't know are, are, are all the people just buying up a winter's promise like what why is it always out of stock okay well that's disappointing our total oh testing some coupons. No, it didn't work. Oh, no. Let's check my, my wish list real quick. Okay, so we have a lot of good stuff here, but nothing that I would replace any of the other stuff with, I don't think. Because I basically have everything else that I really, really wanted from that last shopping trip I did. This was a little bit of a, a surprise for me because I wasn't anticipating getting this one. Well, in any case, I've ended this online book shopping video with six new books. So we have The Gollum and the Ginny by Helene Wecker, Piranesi by Suzanne Clark, Sky in the Deep by Adrienne Young, The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell, 
Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, and The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Um, so I think two of these are hardcover and the rest are paperback. I feel like I made out pretty well. Tried my best. So I might do a separate video when I pick up these books slash when they are shipped to me because I also wanted to show you the books that Michael got me. He sent me two books that I am actually really, really inter interested in. They remind me of The Mummy, which is one of my favorite movies. And I also was sent some lovely books by Rocket Reads. Uh, she's the whole reason that I read the City of Brass trilogy last month because she sent me the first two books among a few other books that I'm excited to dig into. So when I pick up those books and have them in hand, I will probably do another video so that I can showcase all the books that I recently got. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't already, please follow me on Instagram, Goodreads, and Twitter, and I will see you back here very, very soon. Bye!